Hello everyone, welcome to the explanation. So in today's video, I'll be covering e-governed maturity model. So it is one of the most important questions in term of theory as well as viva. So if you are going to attempt for viva, it can be asked what are the various levels of maturity models in e-governed or same in the case of theory question. So before going to the maturity models, let's discuss about the uh, definition of or the benefits of e-governed. So the development of inf information and communication technology that is ICT has made it possible for citizens to interact with the government remotely. It means that the uh, the development of e-government, what it has done is it has made possible for all the citizens to interact with the government, whether they are in uh, the same location or they are in different locations. So they don't have to visit any government officer offices physically. So it, it has made a convenient way to interact with the government. Okay. So next one is, uh, so what is a maturity model? Okay, so in any e-government, an e-government maturity model is a set of stages from basic to advanced ones that remind the maturity of an e-government code. It means that suppose in a country they are going to uh, you know use e-government portal or they are going to establish the e-government so it, the maturity model what it shows is what is the development stage whether, whether it is in uh, basic stage it means that they are just going to install the e-government or they are in advanced one it means that they have already used e-government uh, like uh, models or they have used e-government facility there okay so it basically this maturity model it defines the stages whether they are in basic stage or they are in advanced stage so we are going to uh, see what are the benefits of this maturity model as well as various phases of this maturity models. So if you if you see what are the benefits of maturity model. So first benefit is ability to compare maturity level with other government ministry departments or departments. It means that we can compare other departments or other e-government services that whether they are in advanced level or basic level or you know in the middle level. A known maturity level with precise recommendations from improvement. So, of course, if you are going to use a maturity level, so we can uh, we can always see what are the uh, areas in which we can do the imp improvements. An independent health set of benchmarks. It means that it it forms a benchmark for other government department or other government countries or services. We can say. Simply put, maturity models are used to diagnose and eliminate deficient capabilities to guide improvement initiative and to control progress. It means that if you are going to use maturity model, they are of course going to show you like how mature or mo your model is, whichever, whichever model you are using. So already I have discussed some five models, you know, in previous videos like um, broadcasting model and etc. So they are going to show what are the um, deficiencies, what are the improvements that can be done in that all models area. Okay, so first of all, the e-governance maturity models, that is EMM version 1.0, it has got five levels of maturity. Okay, so we'll discuss all the levels one by one. So if you see the five models of this, this five, five models or five maturity mo mo models, they are based on the fact of speed, openness and completeness and uh, are some major capabilities of ICT. The maturity level described below provide a necessary me mechanism to benchmark the effort invested by an organization in implementing an e-governance. Okay, So all these levels, this is going to show you that in which phase your model belongs to or what are the contributions that, contributions that has been done. So it is very similar to you know uh, developing a project or developing a product we can say. So first of all, the first stage is closed. Second is initial, third is planned, fourth is realized, and five is institutionalized. Okay, so we are going to discuss each of this label one by one. So first step, step, uh, stage is closed, or first level one is closed level. Okay, so here, what do you mean by this closed level? Means here, an organization does not use ICT as a facilitator for good governance and has no plans to do so in near future. It means that. A country which has no uh, which has not implemented e-government okay it means that the country or the organization they are not using any information and communication technologies okay still they are dependent on the physical works or the paper works we can say such situation may arise due to lack of exposure to ICT and associated benefits that again may depend upon a number of reasons for example remoteness or lack of resources so why this happened why this organization why this area they have not implemented e-governance because of they they, uh, they can lack, lack the um, lack of exposure of ICTs it means that they don't have this information and communication technology facility or they can be remote area where the internet cannot be reached lack of resources okay so this can be the case of when the villages or very remote areas we can see 
as a result the organization is closed in term of being connected and sharing of information in context of e governance that's why it is called closed it means that they don't they are not using any services of e governance they are, that's why they are called closed this label is called closed however even in this condition the organization may be efficiently function of course we can see that uh, even without implementing e governance facilities uh, still the work are been done like paperwork the uh, the disadvantage of the, uh, those things are that uh, it is costly or maybe there can be a middleman problem let's go to initial level 2 which is initial stage so in this stage the top management knows ict and its application and benefits for organization it means that in this stage the organizations they knows what is information and communication technology they knows what are the benefits of implementing e governance or electronic government in their organization no organized efforts have been attempted to undertake the e government initiation but they are too lazy to take any attempt in order to initiate this e government uh, e implementing this e government models efforts usually are experimental and with lack of direction it means that we know okay we know what is the benefit of e governance we know what is ict still we are too lazy or we don't have a right direction so that we can experiment with this models in the end of this stage it's expected to that the necessity of e governance is realized it means that at the end of this stage initial stage we are going to initialize the implementation of e governance it means that we are going to talk about that okay let's install or let's use this models main criteria of this stage are degree of ict knowledge in organization perception of e governance advantages and disadvantages and administrative efforts and productivity evolution of efforts it means that we are going to use our knowledge we, we are going to use the ict knowledge we are going to see what are the advantages and disadvantages of e governance we are going to see its productivity ness okay so at the end of this initial stage what we are going to do we are going to initiate okay let's develop or let's install the e governance facilities next is okay so level 3 is planned okay it means that in earlier stages what we did we started okay fine we are going to implement the e governance model so in planned state what we are going to do is we are going to start with a systematic approach it means that we are going to now install we are going to define we are going to formulate what are the planning what are the strategies that we need so with respect to strategic approach information technology strategic plan is formulated in this stage so we are going to formulate the plans okay how we are going to develop this e governance model need assessments are need made to prioritize the areas of implementation and the measure the extent of e readiness it means that we are going to prioritize that okay which area we are going to implement what all things we will need okay so we do all the studies here all the planning here all the strategy we are going to develop here only taking necessary input from need assessment study extensive planning has been carried out indicating indicating policies strategies various activities stakeholders roles and responsibilities and resources required in terms of time money and manpower okay so like a project is developed what we do in the previous uh, stage we okay we did finalize that we are going to develop a model in this stage what we are going to do we are going to do planning as well as we can we are going to do all the strategies or we can say uh, what are the resources that we are going to need whether we have that resources or not so all the things are done in this planned stage main criteria of this stage are vision definition need assessment and e governance plan and documentation okay so we are going to develop mainly we are going to develop plan and then we are going to document that so next stage is realized okay so this is the implementation stage so after all the strategies or the planning is done so what we are going to do we are going to implement the model here after the strategy formulation in last stage or in previous stage we can say we'll have implementation and assessment in this stage so we are going to implement the model so according to a strategies action plan with budget and time will be defined so here what we can we can do is we can define we can de, uh, we can uh, like we can talk about the planning of budget and time how much money we need and how much time we are going to need then required actions are implemented and finally the result would be measured and controlled so we are going to implement finally we are going to implement the plan whatever we have planned and then we'll see what are the results of this planning so in under this realized stage we have got this ret retrospective 
so business processes are balanced with the vision and overall e governance objective and there is a awareness about e governance among all the concerned stakeholders it means that in this retrospective stage what we are going to do we are going to aware all the stakeholder as well as the user okay fine we are going to implement this model so next is e ready so here we are going to get ready uh like in terms of infrastructure whether we have good infrastructure or not whether we are legally we are going to implement that or not whether we have technology or not whether we have human resources or not okay next stage is this partially open so some of the e governance services are deployed leading to partial information exchange among the entities so partially open organization sometimes focus only on their internal or back end process allowing an information exchange within the confine of organization and thus remaining insulated from its external entities it means that partially open means that we are going we are just looking at the back end or the internal processes only we are not going to um, like exchange information with the external entities okay so here uh in this in such cases government employee interface is visible whereas government to citizen is not visible so government employee if you see it is the internal process it is the internal uh, exchange of information so it is visible to this but it is not visible to g2c we can say so that is the partially open stage so next one is okay so in an enthusiasm to quick open up its front end the organization negligibly focuses on computerization of supporting back end process thus creating the hollowness behind the face of the static website okay so it means that the information is just for the internal employee or it is just the internal activities that has been seen but not the external next is open so in this stage what happens is now the disadvantage of this um, partially open thing is Uh, removed here it means that the information exchange is done with the citizen with the employee with the government with all the users we can say so final stage is institute institutionalized okay so you can see in this stage the e governance system of organization is driven by a well established knowledge management system that generates an ability in our organization to evolve with time in view of new requirement it means that in this stage our institution or the e governance system has totally been implemented and hence it can evolve or it can develop itself with the times so e governance becomes an effortless exercise for organization and it becomes a way of life for the stakeholder and the user it means that the e governance system it is going to benefit all the customers users as well as there is no headache of paperwork or there, there is no headache for the uh, you know uh, physical or systems or we can this say physical works so the organization at this level is completely paperless it means that we have all we have completely installed our e governance model and we are using it in a proper way so with time it is going to develop itself okay so these were the five models of um, maturity models of e governance so i think uh, i hope you got this so in next video i'll going i'm going to discuss about e readiness so stay safe and stay healthy thank you